Okay. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, my dear friends. I, Dr. Aniruddha Babar, welcome you once again in another session, another webinar, which is organized by Tetso.talks webinar series. Uh, today we have a very special guest, and uh, he is Professor Dr. Amar Garg. Professor Amar Garg is a vice chancellor of uh, Shovit Institute of Technology, Shovit Institute of Engineering and Technology. Uh, he has 45 years of experience as a professor of microbiology. Professor Gerg was trained in England and Germany. He has published more than 125 research papers, supervised 40 PhD, participated in more than two dozen international conferences abroad, recipient of Young Scientist Gold Medal of IBS and Professor Hiradal Chakravarti Award of Indian Science Congress. He also a recipient of Best, Best Teacher Award of 2018, Global Outreach for Excellence in Education Leadership of 2019. Uh, I was very uh, really blessed to have an opportunity to work uh, with Professor Garg, and uh, I personally learned a lot. And I'm very really thankful to Professor Garg that uh, he has taken uh, time for us in his busy schedule. He has been delivering webinars all over the world. He's a very big guy. Thank you so much, sir. And now stage is yours. Please take your time. Thank you so much. So should I now start? Sure, sir, please. Yeah. OK, now let me first share my screen. Krishna, turn off the mic. Huh? Krishna, turn off your mic. Yeah, yeah, mic is it. So, well, dear friends, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, I am not visible. Uh, you are visible yes, in a small window, sir. My screen is visible, but uh, on the side, I uh, I think that I'm not visible. Is it uh, right? Uh, yeah, you're visible in the small window. But your screen second is second yeah. slide, my second slide is coming? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so dear friends, no problem. Uh, let me first uh, introduce myself uh, that I am at present the Vice Chancellor in Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology. It is a deemed to be university under Section 3 of the UGC Act. And at present, I am sectional president of Environmental Science, uh, Indian Science Congress also. And I am thankful to Dr. Andhut. He has been my colleague when I was pro vice chancellor in JNU Jaipur. He is a wonderful orator, a very good researcher, and an excellent teacher. And I admire him. And uh, Dr. S. Krishnan has also joined together uh, on this webinar. And I will say that he is extremely extraordinary research scholar. Yes, I have seen his wonderful research papers in history in the topmost journals, and he is a very fine and nice guy. So the today's topic, which has been given to me, is COVID-19 emergence, outbreak, and its management. You know, I'm a uh, professor of microbiology since last 45 years. So naturally, this topic uh, is supposed to be close to my heart. During these last six months, everybody starting from five years of age up to more than 100 years of age, everybody has learned the name of COVID, coronavirus, COVID disease, and microbiology world. I'm Happy that now everyone knows microbiology. Microbiology 
it is the study of the microbes and these microbes you know that they are the wonderful organisms viruses i am coming these are the one of the smallest organisms they are 10 to 100 times smaller than bacteria if we come on this anurudh meri action nahi kar pa raha hu main kyunki wo meri visible nahi hai wo oh okay anurudh ha sir ha sir boliye वो इस स्क्रीन जो है मैं सेकंड स्लाइड मेरी आ रही है ना ये बस सर सेकंड स्लाइड आ रही है व्हाट आर वायरसेस हां लेकिन वो मेरी स्क्रीन पास में नहीं आ रही सो दैट आई एम नॉट एबल टू शो माय एक्शंस ओ ओके अपने टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट से कही क्योंकि सो दैट द बहुत सारी चीजें तो मैं हाथ से समझाऊंगा ना इनको बट सर वी कैन सी यू वी कैन सी यू यू आर सीइंग मी यस सर इन द लेफ्ट कॉर्नर विंडो वी कैन सी यू अच्छा only under the electron microscope they are non living now the question you will ask that if they are non living then why they are and how they are making the infection how they are multiplying non living they are outside the cell once they go inside the cell they infect the cell then they become living they become the living it means then they start using the host machine to you and use the essential enzyme system of the host machine make its own nucleic acid and ask the host machine to make the proteins so it means that it is a hijacker it is a kidnapper when this virus it infect your cell then it kidnap your cells it hijack your all metabolic activities and it ask your cell to do what the virus wants that is very interesting so the outside the cell it is non living inside the cell it is living and partially living you can say because it use the host machinery it direct it control the host machinery and ask the host machinery to do the work for him this may contain either dna or rna both nucleic acids are not present either of the two nucleic acid will be present it will also contain the proteins there in the center there will be the nucleic acid and on the outside on the sides there will be the protein uh, molecules or protein spikes or protein capsomeres you can say that it, it is protected by the proteins and the capsomere or the capsid it is prepare it is made up of the polypeptide molecules and which protect the nucleic acid now this is structure why i wanted to tell you that now in case of the covid 19 many of the uh, news on the television or in the newspapers or on the whatsapp university you can say with on the whatsapp news you might be seeing that or you might have heard that when the summer will come the virus will go when this will come then this will happen when this will happen so the, this nucleic acid which is present in the center it is well protected my dear uh students and my fellow friends and my fellow colleagues you should try to understand that it is not going to die it has come in the environment it will remain here no virus when it has come in the environment it has never gone once it come it live in this environment the only thing is that its virulence may be reduced and 
our immunity may be improved these are the two things that is thoda tum chalo thoda hum chale some somewhat changes the virus will bring somewhat changes you will bring and both will live to live live to live together both will love to live together you can say it that neither virus will go nor you will go this virus is not a killer it is not going to kill now you will ask me the question that why, why so many deaths throughout the world including in india this is because of the mismanagement this is 100% because of the mismanagement the virus is not a killer virus now this virus it is also having a very thin layer of the lipids and the what is the what is the beauty of this lipid that it is binding the nucleic acid and the protein and we are taking the advantage of this lipid layer that when we want to deactivate it or when we want to make it non virulent then we are using either the alcohol based hand sanitizers or so so you can use either soap or you can use the hand sanitizers to sanitize your hands what they do that they dissolve the lipid layer and separate the protein layer from the nucleic acid and the structure of the virus is dismantled and when this structure of the virus is dismantled then it becomes inactivated you can say it now these are the two things which are most popular or which are the popularity based on the uh, on the uh, media but uh, uh, but that it is not that only the uh, alcohol based sanitizer or soap is enough even the uh, salts normal uh, normal kitchen salt normal salt you can make you can uh, prepare its 1% solution one one spoon salt uh, you can uh, pour in uh, one glass of water make a solution and you can use it it will also be able to protect so the salt water you can use or fitkari alum alum also you can use so if you use the gargles using the salt and alum then your uh, throat throat because the infection from where this infection can go uh, can be through your mouth through your nose through your ears and through your eyes these are the four entries from where this infection can go eyes and ear this is rare, rare but the mouth and nose these are the most common and that is why you will find that most of the time when the uh, material be, is being collected for testing then it is being uh, collected from the nose uh, inside or from the throat uh, at this place so if you are keeping your nose and throat infection free that is good in good condition then you will not get corona virus disease so my dear friends i would like to advise you people that you at least do gargles in the morning in the afternoon or in the evening or late night or at the night either with the salt or with the alum or by putting both both together so you will be able to protect yourself viruses they are able to infect all living forms whether they are plants animals humans or bacteria fungi algae protozoans they are such versatile organisms that ye kisi ko nahi chhodte they don't leave anyone for them everyone is equal chahe wo mukesh ambani ho chahe wo ap garg ho chahe wo dusra koi labor ho they have they are not differentiating anyone whether he is a uh, he is a politician or administrator or anyone or whether hindu or muslim or christian or uh, uh, sikh or isai or anyone that is it is most uh, most peculiar virus or the virus is they also infect the plants they also infect bacteria and the one of the very beauty beauty of the virus don't think that all viruses are dangerous or all viruses are 
uh, are uh, causing the disease. The purity of Ganges water, it is because of the viruses. In the Ganges water, there are bacteriophages. And these bacteriophages are able to kill the dangerous bacteria. And that is why the Ganges water, if you keep for years, years, years in a closed bottle in your house, it does not get spoiled. Even in seaways, the cleaning of the seaways, the eating of the dead full bacteria, it is by the viruses. So don't think that the viruses are bad. There is no organism bad on this earth. Every organism is useful. Nature has not made anything which is bad for the ecosystem. Nature has made everything which is useful to the ecosystem, which is useful to the environment, which is useful for the survival of the life, which is useful for the survival of the biosphere. I will come later on that why we are disturbing the biosphere. Now, I come this. What are this coronavirus? Because you people are very much uh, hearing coronavirus, COVID, COVID, COVID since last six months. So this coronavirus is aisa nahi hai ke these are the new virus. This is a very old virus. The people it knows uh, since last more than 100 years. It is known. Uh, it is a large family of the viruses, scientific names, and it is it causing the disease in the humans in other animals uh, since last uh, several years and the human and human coronavirus generally it cause mild illness cold cold cough and cold many times most of you might have heard and most of most of you might have you know, got infection also with the cold and am i fine with the english or should i use the bilingual sir it's okay english english would be better sir no no for me it's okay I'm fine with both the languages. Uh, so it's okay. Whatever did it to you, whatever is able to you. No okay. That. So yeah. pre previously, coronavirus, it was, it included SARS and MERS. Now I come on this history that how this had emerged. In 2003, if many of the few people remember, then in 2003, SARS virus came. MERS virus came. All these two viruses, they, again, they came from the China. Severe. Uh, respir acute respiratory syndrome and uh, in this case also the respiration uh, is severely affected now this COVID-19 which has been given the name I will come on that that why it has been given this name and this is also a coronavirus and it is a new strain of the coronavirus that has not been previously identified in the humans in I'm saying that previously not identified in the humans it means that this virus is not new it was living somewhere in animals somewhere in animals and from animals it has come to the human that is new but the virus is not new so the most likely that this uh, virus uh, is uh, uh, reservoir its reservoir is considered as uh, bats chamgadar jo isko aap kehte these bats, it is considered that it is living in these, uh, in, in the pets, in the pets of these bats and in the pangolins. I will show you their di diagram. But it is believed that this virus had jumped from these two species to the human through some intermediate host. It, it still, we do not know that what is the, which one is the intermediate host. The studies with this coronavirus and the MERS virus, they suggest that this virus can remain on surfaces for several days from two hours to nine days on different surfaces and different things and now the scientists have found that it can also survive for few hours in air 239 scientists from 32 countries they work together they did series series of experiments they belong to the different fields some were from the physics, some from chemistry, some microbiology, some biology, some zoology, and several people, they conducted several types of the experiments. And now they have demonstrated that this virus can be spread even through the air 
that is why now who and most of the governments they are recommending that no meeting of many people should be conducted in closed room closed room which are having poor ventilation they are the source of infection so as they are the source of spread of this disease so please 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 don't organize any activity in closed room particularly when you speak then during the speak the many of uh, the air do droplets they come from your mouth and these air droplets are containing the virus and they can go up to a distance of 6 feet under the normal conditions if the atmosphere is dry there is a air current then the distance may be more so that is why who and the most of the scientists they have recommended that we should maintain at least a distance of 6 feet because when we are speaking then during the speaking whatever comes out from our mouth the air droplets these air droplets can travel up to a maximum distance of 6 feet and why we should wear the mask that we are wearing the mask then the virus or air droplets which are in the air they will not enter to your mouth and they will not be able to infect you this is the philosophy or this is the science or this is the basic principle behind this that why should use we use the 6 feet distance and why we should use, use the mask if we are using the 6 feet distance and if we are using the mask then 90% we can protect ourselves only 10% there are the chances that still you may get infection because it is not necessary that every time 24 hours you will maintain the distance with everyone with every situation and you will 24 hours you will wear the mask uh, everywhere and even some of the viral particles they can go into your uh through the nose to your body uh, by by various means various uh, various systems it has been now calculated i tell you the principle uh, behind this when we are respiring then during the respiration from our nose 20 viral particles per minute they are coming when we are speaking then per minute from our normal speech 200 virus particles they are coming and when we are loudly speaking singing or giving a speech like may i, I am giving you to so 2000 virus particles can come in one minute and 1000 particles viral particles are enough to cause infection so if you are living in a close contact of a person who is talking for more than 4 minutes then you are likely to be infected if you are living in contact of a person who is infected for more than uh, 20 minutes if he is infected and if you are uh, close to him then there are the chances uh, and you are not speaking and he is not speaking then also there are the chances of infection so that is why now it is recommended that we should try to avoid the contact with the people we should try to avoid that avoid the talking with the people we should try to avoid to sitting uh, sitting close to the people now many people they say that shake hand because why the the hands are the most infected uh, parts of the body because many times what happens we will be putting our hands on the mouth our nose and all this so the hands they are the most contaminated or uh, contaminated part of our body that is why it is recommended that we should uh, we should wash the hands very frequently and we should not shake hands at all thanks to our sanatan dharma thanks to our indian culture where it has been taught that namaste now the world has realized and the entire world is now using this symbol of respect so now i come that sars covid 2 this is the name or the covid 
this is now uh, very interesting uh, point i would like to discuss uh, with you people many of the people they are thinking that why it has spread uh, uh, in the whole of the world and could it have been stopped yes it could have been stopped there are reports that in september 2019 in wuhan city of china the infection first took place before this i would like to tell you one very important story that how it happens in 2003 and 2005 uh, four when this sars uh, virus uh, came uh, and the mers virus came it was also from wuhan city it was also from china and then and they in wuhan there is a world fame institute of virology that is the top most institute of virology so the scientists they decided that uh, in institute of virology in bihar wuhan there should be a team of the expert virologists and these experts virologists should think and should see that this sars virus which is coming from the bats which is residing in the bats this should be investigated and how we can prepare the vaccine against it that is why the many of the uh, experiments for the genetical changes and for all these things they started in the wuhan institute of virology and that was the center of the study and that is why now the people because uh, this virus it has come from wuhan it has been noticed in wuhan and from wuhan it has spread to the entire world that is why the most of the scientists they are putting a question that it might be that it has uh, it has been escaped from the wuhan institute of virology but god knows better that what is the fact i am telling you some of the scientific facts which are present uh, uh, in the scientific literature uh, in september 2019 china government they knew it very well that the infection by this virus had started and this virus is new and this virus named it its name was given sars cov2 it is the same virus only with slight genetical changes which was present in 2003 from china and now its name has been given as covid-19 by who although usa wanted to name it as the china virus but i think that nothing nothing is bad if the people would have accepted it as a china virus because we are having spanish flu we are having spanish virus marmar virus several other virus uh, after the name of the uh, city or after the name of the country uh, although spanish flu it was not a flu at all it was not a uh, it was not originated in spain uh, but it was noticed over the world that's why it is called so uh, it could have been uh, named uh, anything but uh, it is now uh, that the covid 19 it has been named and it is the uh, sars is the severe acute respiratory syndrome and mers is the middle east respiratory syndrome that is they are related with the some sort of respiration problem and the same is with the sars cov2 there is uh, the uh, the uh, maximum genome of the sars cov2 is the same as that of the sars cov1 or sars cov2 so the we are now coming uh, that uh, what size of the virus it may be this is uh, the flu virus and mitochondria it is slightly bigger than this now i am showing that these are the different uh, cells you will find this the atom size this is the uh, fluorine molecule uh, protein molecule polio virus is the very small virus you will find uh, about uh, 12 to 15 uh, nanometer and this is here you will find uh, here somewhere you will find this this uh, coronavirus so that is uh, about 200 to 300 my, uh, nanometer mitochondria these are the different sizes uh, calculated and uh, seen under the electron microscope now emergence how it has it has emerged how it is this virus this is the bat you are seeing these pads these pads this virus normally it lives here this sars 
SARS virus. And from this place, it has either transferred to this is the pangolin, this is the uh, photo of the pangolin, and this is the all, uh, all, um, all spikes, and in this, uh, this virus leaves. So this has been reported, this has been found that this virus is either from these pets, pets or from the pangolins. And from these pangolins and bats, it has now come to the human. Why it has come to the human? What are the reasons? Now, my dear friends, you try to understand these are the bats, these are the pangolins. They also living on this biosphere. They have also contributed for the formation of this biosphere. They are also the part of this earth. And now you are eating it, you are eating it, you are eating it, eating it. When you are eating it, then this virus is living on this. Where this virus will go? Try to find a question answer to this. You are eating the bats. <clears throat> you are eating the pangolins. Where this virus is living and what you are doing? You are eating the bats and pangolins without cooking. Wild. Raw meat. So what will happen to this virus? Where it will go? It will jump. It will jump from these animals to the humans. So it is thought that this virus had jumped from these bats and pangolins through some mammal or through some other animal which we still do not know to the humans. So this, this is the biodiversity threat when we are, you are killing Geo or Ginedo. This is a concept of the nature. Nature does not say that you kill anyone. Nature does not say that you uh, destroy anyone. The best example in this case is for the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs thought that we are the largest animal, we are the this, 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 and we can do anything, whatever that we like. And they started destroying everything in the nature. So what the nature did? Okay, well, fine. You are finished. So the dinosaurs were finished. So the thing is that don't try to eliminate any of these species which is present on this earth. Every species has contributed in the formation of this earth in the formation of this biosphere and therefore they all have the right to live in this earth as much as you have. Don't think that this earth belongs to you. This earth belongs to each and every species which has been responsible for the creation of this earth on which we are living today. So this is that how this virus has emerged. That is due to the biodiversity loss. I will come on scientific principle that how this biodiversity loss contribute to the generation of the more and more infectious diseases. Now we have this the structure of the coronavirus. This is the nucleic acid, RNA, and these are the protein uh, capsomeres and protein uh, coats, you can say it, this. And this is the very fine, very fine, this uh, lipid layer, lipid layer over here. And this lipid layer is responsible that when you are using this uh, alcohol-based sanitizer or soap, then this lipid layer dismantle this structure. Now, how this in fact that these uh, protein coats, capsomeres, they get bind to your cells in the humans ACE, ACE, ACE2 cells, which are the uh, receptor of the cells, you can say it. They bind over there, and then what happens that this nucleic acid, it goes into the cell. This, uh, all this structure, it remains outside. And only this nucleic acid goes into the cell. And when it enters into the cell, then in the cell, what it does, that it hijack your entire cell. And it says to the entire cell, okay, well, fine. Now you are under my control. I have hijacked you. 
i have uh, you have to work whatever i say so now this nucleic acid will dictate the um, entire metabolism of the cell that you prepare my multiple copies of this nucleic acid and then rna and then this protein and then this new virus is synthesized and in the cell when it is synthesized then the cell burst and the new virus new it again uh, uh, comes out and they again infect the new cells this is that how is spread and prevention this is spread through the droplets air droplets or aerosol uh, th there is a difference between air droplets and aerosol aerosols are very minute very very minute uh, drops of the air uh, drops of the water in the air i will say it drops very minute drops of water in the air uh, which are emitted uh, which comes out uh, during your respiration from your nose and the air droplets are the large droplets when you speak then uh, along with your saliva some of the droplets they come out uh, or, or when you sneeze then uh, so the uh, the large amount of the uh, aeros uh, air droplets they come in the air which are already having the virus and therefore they uh, they, uh, they, uh, they contaminate Uh, the contacted, they contaminate the hands, they contaminate the body, they contaminate the surfaces, and thus this is prevention. How we can prevent? We have already discussed that maintain the personal hygiene, wear the mask, and maintain a social distance. And if you are keeping it, then you will be able to be uh, able to prevent it. Symptoms. This is one of the very important. when this virus is came uh, came in india or when it became uh, became known to indians you can say it if you see my facebook uh, post you will find that on 25th of march that is after two days of the lockdown i had written a post as a microbiologist that in india 60 to 70% of the population will be asymptomatic why asymptomatic because the symptoms will not appear but the pupil will have the infection they will be the carrier in now the during last 6 months uh, for 4 months uh, the scientific investigation medical investigation and uh, several other reports they have confirmed it last week when there was a survey in delhi on delhi population it has come that 25% of the population is already infected but uh, but that survey also uh, i am of the opinion very strong opinion that not 25% but 70 to 80% population was already infected has already infected and they have developed the uh, uh, immunity or they are having the asymptomatic most of the people and uh, uh, they are not showing the symptoms but they are having the infection these such type of the pupil are very dangerous they are asymptomatic for them but you do not know that if, uh, how much immunity you have and when you will be very in very much close contact of these people then they may transmit the infection to you that is why the government of india and the who they are recommending that please 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 take care don't shake hands maintain a social distance wear mask with everyone whether he is covid positive or whether he or she is covid negative because we do not know that the person to whom you are talking is asymptomatic or symptomatic so asymptomatic means that those people they do not show the symptoms but they are infected major symptoms what they are dry cough headache high fever tiredness and the most important is shortening of breath most important but but this shortening of breath it is a symptom when it comes you have been left with little time it is a complicated uh, complicated system it is a, a indicator of the complication but if you are careful 
and you are sensitive, then you can realize that you are losing your breath. That is why now it is recommended that the pupil should have an oxytometer and with the oximeter you can measure the blood oxygen uh, in your uh, in your fingers in your fingers you can put the finger uh, in that and then it will tell you uh, that how much is the blood uh, in your uh, how much the how much is the oxygen in your blood and if the oxygen in the blood is uh, more than 90% or 90, then you are fine. And if it is critically low, that is below 50 or something like that, or below 60, something like that, then it is serious and it is very serious. And when you find that uh, the oxygen level is going 70 or something like that, then you should consult a doctor. So the oxygen level when it starts decreasing, because when it starts decreasing, then even then at this time, you may not feel that you are having the shortening of breath but your oxygen level is decreasing. And that is why this oxygen level decrease, uh, it can be measured very easily. Anyone can measure and that will be a, one of the good symptom or one of the good uh, method of prediction of this uh, disease. Then the less common symptoms are aches, pains, uh, nasal congestion, conjunctivitis, sore throat, diarrhea, L diarrhea is now the recently added as the major symptom. Loss of taste or smell, it is a symptom which has been told by several uh, patient uh, who, have, uh, who have been infected and the speech problem is also one of the symptoms which is told. How to diagnose? There are two types of the test mostly. One you are seeing that this is the antigen antibody test based test which is very fast, about 20 seconds or maximum one minute. And these are generally used for the screening. But uh, basically, as a microbiologist, uh, I don't agree with, the, with this antigen antibody test, uh, a test or a good test uh, for diagnosis of the COVID-19. Because in this case, what happens that uh, uh, antibodies if you are testing the antigen, then also it is bad. And if you are testing the antibodies, antibodies many times they form, uh, they are formed at a later stage and in the early stage, it will not give you the positive or negative test, even uh, even if it does not give any, any information in those uh, at the early stages. And this is the one uh, RT-PCR. This is the molecular diagnostic test. In molecular diagnostic test, also it takes uh, about four hours, but it is the confirmatory test. And what we do in this case, we collect the sample from the nose or from the throat, throat and this sample is put uh, in one test tube for the extraction of the nucleic acid RNA, because this is the RNA virus. So for the extraction of the RNA, and then this RNA is used for multiplication using the polymerase chain reaction. And uh, that is then, then it is converted into DNA and then this uh, DNA is used uh, for the PCR chain reaction, PCR reaction, and then the last number of copies are formed and these are then identified using DNA sequence and the virus is, uh, virus is uh, confirmed, confirmatory test it is done and uh, it takes about four hours. Avoid coronavirus, keep your throat and lungs infection free. This is what I'm, I, I'm saying uh, from the very beginning. If you see my uh, posts, even on the Facebook post from the very first day when it started uh, and when even it, it, it did not infect India or when it, did, it was not popular in India and when it was in China, then also I had wrote certain, uh, I had written certain posts and I had said that if you are keeping your throat and lungs infection free, then you can get uh, get rid of this. And to keep your throat infection free, you can use the gargles, you can use warm water, you can use warm tea, or you can use uh, some kada, which is now prescribed, or uh, some things which have been prescribed by uh, Ayush Mantrale and man many things, particularly this giloe, is ashwagandha, muleti, uh, and this uh, lemongrass, uh, black pepper, clove, ginger is uh, very important 
mint. So several of these herbs, uh, they are all a tulsa. These herbs are known, uh, which which are which will keep your throat infection free. And to keep your lungs infection free, you can uh, take the regularly. You can take the steam uh, once a day or something like that, so that your lungs will remain free. So such there's a prevention. These are the prevention aspects. And if you use the prevention, that is the wear the mask, maintain social distance, and use kada and all these things. Then it will uh, uh, it will give you the uh, maximum level of the protection. Why infections from animals to human? The studies show, uh, why animal say human ke under infection are why, why it is coming? Why? Oh, oh, because what happens that there it has been now identified that there are 1.7 million unidentified viruses which are living in animals and they have the potential to infect the human life on transmission. Now, what happens that when you are killing these wild animals, when you are eating these wild animals, particularly as raw, uh, raw meat, then what happens that these uh, viruses which are li living and residing in these animals, they get easily transferred to the humans. And the one studies, it shows that mostly now due to the more and more closer contact of the uh, human, with the wild animals, it is the one of the cause. You are destroying the forest. You are destroying destroying the uh, natural habitat of the wild animals. You are building. You are constructing the houses. You are constructing the industries, and you are doing uh, doing all these things uh, for that purpose. And it means that then you are coming uh, in very close contact of the wild animals. And due to that that particular thing these uh, wild uh, the uh, infections which are living in the wild an animals they are being transmitted or they are being transferred uh, to the humans now it has been calculated by the environmentalist being the student of the environmental science and being the uh, sectional president of the environmental science of the indian science congress it is my duty to apprise you people my dear friends that if you invest one dollar on protection of the uh, nature or protection of the uh, environment, then the environment will return you nine dollars, nine times. This is the best investment. This is the best investment. If you are investing one dollar today in the environment, then you will get nine dollars in return of it. The maximum, this is the nine times you can just see. This is the, so now it is estimated that biodiversity i'm coming to some sort of not biodiversity that what is the biodiversity and why because of the loss of the biodiversity these infections are becoming more and more now the new scientific technology it has uh, demonstrated that there are 8.7 million eukaryotes species on our planet previous estimate was three to hundred millions that is it was very highly variable, highly variable, unpredictable, and the techniques were not very good. And now the using the genetical uh, techniques or the genotypes, uh, metagenomics, using bioinformatics language and several things, we have been able to find out that there are 8.7 million eukaryotic species. Sorry. 1.4 million species of flora, fauna, and microbes have been examined and they have been named. They have been classified that this is their now name. 86% of the land species and 94% of the marine species remain undiscovered. There is a large scope of study in microbiology. If you are uh, well worth and if you want that you can see that uh, more than 80 percent of the information in microbiology even today we do not know the science is not this science or this particular branch of the science is not saturated it's still much uh, much much uh, more science to be done now the biodiversity loss why this biodiversity is being lost what are the factors what are the regions such a rich diverse biodiversity 8.4 million species in this universe now these are being lost every year now what are the reasons one is the habitat loss 
habitat is being lost invasive species some other species are coming into the uh, forest area and when these some species other species are coming they are invading your natural fauna, uh, flora and fauna and the other species are being uh, eliminated or are being extinct over exploitation we are exploiting we are we are exploiting the uh, nature uh, too much and the pollution is the another factor and the climate change is the another and the most important factor is here this is the human activity human population growth increasing consumption reduction of the resource efficiency my dear friends you will wonder to know that 7.5 billion human population on this earth is having the highest amount of the biomass in comparison to the all other species and therefore the scientists are of the opinion that this biomass need to be need to be need to be reduced need to be just a, just a minute alpna mein webinar mein so this human biomass need to be reduced and if it is not reduced then the nature will bring such type of the corona virus again again and again this is a virus this is a war of the nature against the human for its continuous disturbance of the nature biodiversity dilution effect this is the scientific principle i would tell uh, i would just uh, try to uh, put one question that does biodiversity loss aggravate transmission of infectious disease spread from animals to human kya biodiversity ke kam hone ki wajah se infection animal se human mein aa raha hai this is the question answer is yes now how it is yes this is due to the biodiversity dilution effect because when the number of the species are being reduced then where these organisms microorganisms bacteria or fungi or viruses or protozoans where they will go and live when you are reducing the number of species this number these these microbes are not being reduced my dear friends i would like to tell you one thing that the number of the microbes number of the viruses number of bacteria these are not being reduced these are increasing these this type these they are uh, their species their genetical composition some of the some of the viruses some of the bacteria are having the same genetic composition over the billions of years i have shared one of the uh, micro animal uh, data train uh, this is surviving on this earth since last more than 10 billion years the same animal micro animal in the marine water very small micro animal it is lagging and you you will find this one of the uh, picture uh, i have shared on my facebook amargar amargar this i have shared over there you can see that video it is uh, so the uh, microbes they are fascinating they are having the conserved region of the genetical composition and uh, they are uh, they are as such as they were billions of years ago their genetical composition has not changed and now you are changing the biodiversity so that is why they are changing there they i will give you only the two examples there is a one one example of the west nile virus disease this is caused through the mosquito culex uh, pipiens and uh, when a mosquito it bites the the birds the infected birds and from that infected birds uh, it it uh, uh, goes uh, to the humans through the bite of the tulex and it has been calculated and it has been found that this uh, culex virus uh, culex mosquito uh, it is present 
only in those areas where the biodiversity is less where the large number of species are present large number of the biodiversity is present there this mosquito does not bite does not bite the infected birds does not bite the birds and do not infect it remains on them the another uh, example of the disease is the lyme disease which is very common in us and this has also been calculated 5300 year old uh, disease uh, it is known since that time and it is also clearly found that uh, it is uh, present in those type of the areas where the biodiversity is less and due to the loss of the biodi biodiversity in particular area of the one of the uh, us it has uh, it has grown up on this disease has started developing during the la, uh, recent years climate change also leads to the loss of the biodiversity one thing is that uh, that we are destroying another thing is the climate is changing and due to the change of the climate the biodiversity is lost and that is also resulting in the increase of the transmission of the animal diseases to the humans experts they believe that there is no doubt that zoonotic diseases are on rise during the last 50 years after 1970 after 1970 and if you will trace then you will find that after 1970 most of the countries they have started aggressively on the industrialization of their countries and due to the industrialization this biodiversity is being lost and due to the loss of the biodiversity this uh, uh, transmission of the infectious disease from animal to humans humans are more at risk from the disappearance of the biodiversity because what will happen that biodiversity loss tends to increase the pathogen transmission across a wide range of the infectious disease systems this the bernard college ecologist this is a, one of the top most college of ecology and they have seen that when the biodiversity jab, jab, when number of species i am not i am not uh, talking about the density of a, a species i am talking about the number of species a b c d e f that is different type of the species when the different type of the species are lost when there is only one or two types of the species are left and the number of microbes are more then these number of microbes more because they have to survive they will uh, transfer or they will transmit or they will develop the mechanism to uh, to cause the disease in this less number of the uh, uh, by uh, less number of the species and that's why the biodiversity loss is mainly increasing the infectious disease now this is a paper which has been published in nature in december 2019 in, in this, uh, nature you know that this is the highest rated journal journal in biology and we consider it as uh, that uh, any paper uh, which is published in the nature it is the original and it, it is the final uh, final words in science and there it has been found that 220000 26500 species are threatened and they have been extinct and there is a network of the uh, 16000 scientists who have been able to show that 40% of the amphibian 33% of the reef building corals 25% of mammals and 14% of the birds they are at stake and the most important thing is which i would like to emphasize over here and i have also uh, done some work and we have found that 2.5% of the insects are being eliminated are being dropped every year in the ecosystem from this it is very very serious thing insects and birds the loss of the insects and birds from the environment it is a one of the major cause of the biodiversity loss and suppose if you think that if there are no insects if there will be no insect my dear friends you will also be not there because the insects they are mainly responsible for the pollination for the 
every fruit on food crop what you eat there will be no cross pollination there will be no cross fertilization there will be no seed setting there will be no fruits if the insects are not there so don't kill them they are your friends they are the friends of the nature they are the friends of the ecosystem they are the friends of the biosphere and the biosphere ecosystem and your survival is only because of the insects so please 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 don't kill them don't use the insecticide don't use the pesticides don't use the chemicals in the agriculture don't use them and try to make a balance my suggestion as the sectional president of environmental science you know that now the forests are being reduced our culture is our or or our greed greed is increasing now we want independent house we want a separate flat nuclear families every child wants a, a single room every child want a uh, want a separacy privacy and all these things the large number of the houses are constructed industries are constructed forests are being deforest forests are being cut down now if the forest will go away what will happen to this biosphere you think the entire 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 life will be finished so what i have suggested and i am propagating i am requesting you all those who are listening to me that please 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 try to develop small jungles small jungles or a small forest now what i mean to say i uh, until now you have, you might have uh, uh, heard that jungles and forest are large areas large areas we are cutting a small we do not want then what will happen so i am propagating this uh, particular idea uh, in the public uh, since last 3 uh, 4 months that we should have at least 10 to 25% of our residential or factory or our commercial area develop into the small jungles a small jungle i mean not the grass grassland not the grass lawn we are very fond of that the buildings should be 50 uh, 50 male or 50 uh, 50 uh, floors and there should be a good lawn on the uh, on the base you are totally disturbing the ecosystem it is 100% wrong you are going up and cutting the forest to the down level this is the most dangerous culture which has been started by the builders and unfortunately our ngt is also not looking after this it must be made compulsory mandatory that every house will have to develop a 10 to 25 percent of the area into the small jungle or the small jungle of forest i mean that the vertical growth of the plants vertical growth of the tree they should be long in every house there should be uh, there, there should be at least 10 trees if you are not having the 10 trees in the house then you have no right to live on this earth you have no right to uh, respire from this uh, from this air uh, to get the oxygen if you cannot give it back to the environment so please try to develop the small jungles in your house in your areas of the residence and it protect your environment not on the environment protect yourself i will say it don't uh, i don't mind mean to say that protect environment if you protect yourself this will be the congenial this will be the good good thing if you are uh, using it uh, because this uh, well, uh, this vertical uh, canopy or vertical growth of the plants will give you a good amount of the oxygen and i can, I, I tell you that do one experiment or go to some of the houses where there are the large trees are on the boundaries you will find that the temperature of these houses is 2 degree less they will use less air conditioning they will use less uh, artificial environment for the survival as we are increasing our comforts we are increasing the pressure on the environment so 
now i come to the second part that is the outbreak of the covid uh, and uh, do i have the time to continue uh, so you may take few more minutes and conclude please so uh, outbreak of the covid you you uh, i will go quickly because he has giving me the indicator that uh, i am having only few minutes so sure. out, out, outbreak of the covid you are having that uh, uh, that how this disease has increased uh, slowly and slowly and at present now you will find that about 50000 uh, cases per day they are coming today i, I have seen now this covid uh, why you are worried about this covid or why you are worried about the corona virus there are several other viruses which have killed millions of millions of people now the, this is the seven uh, deadly viruses which i am uh, telling you that which which are killing uh, every year this, this this is the number of the death per year throughout the world 3.2 million just by the pneumonia and flu bacteria and viruses hiv aids 2.1 million diarrheal disease 1.9 tuberculosis 1.7 million malaria 1.1 million hepatitis b 1 million this, today is the hepatitis awareness day and before uh, talking to you people i was having a two hour session uh, on the hepatitis awareness day and uh, and there we have seen that now the science uh, or the who says that 325 million people are infected from the hepatitis and 1.3 million people are dying per year so we are why 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 we are so uh, so so worried about this corona virus Uh, uh, throughout the world, that we have locked the through the entire world for the last six months. Entire economy has gone. Everybody is talking only about the corona, 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 and all these diseases we have forgotten. While these are also there, so please, please, please try to concentrate on the other diseases also. This corona is not a killer virus. It is uh, the this is media or the or the pharmaceutical companies or this is a this is the advertisement. based system which is creating the panic so uh, as a microbiologist i will suggest that don't panic it it has come it will go and try to live uh, try to learn to live with this now i come that how we can manage it this management one thing i have said that six feet distance mask personal uh, hygiene and the one thing here this is the uh, kadha which is the ayush mantralaya is also saying and if you, if you see uh, the post from our sobit university we have also found and we have we have been recommending since last 4 months that you tea, you take the tea with black pepper clove tulsa lemon grass ginger mulatti uh, lemon honey ashwagandha uh, ashwagandha and uh, the other uh, herbs and they will be able to give you a good protection they will induce the immunity now when uh, it has come i i will come on that last that which type of the vaccine will be able to work the 80% of the world population will shift it is now estimated that they will shift uh, from uh, animal based diet to the plant based diet so this is a great opportunity for the people to uh, start doing this uh, organic farming and yoga is one of now i am coming that how we can improve our immunity vitamin c is the one vitamin d is the another one and the zinc these three things are very important if we use these three things in our diet vitamin c vitamin d and and the zinc if we make a balance then our immunity can develop and Im immunity can be strong and it will not be only against the covid 19 but it will be against all types of the diseases so now i am coming that how we can uh, improve our immunity how we can manage the disease we can use the citrus fruits they are the rich in the uh, vitamin c we can use the now this is a one one table which have uh, vitamin c rich uh, table uh, uh, vegetables these and this is the rich source of the fruits vitamin c vitamin c and do i will share this slide with you and uh, you can share with the students and the other people and uh, with your colleagues uh, these are the different vegetables and fruits uh, which are vitamin c rich this is the one uh, very uh, beautiful uh, classification of the vegetables 
just you remember th th these six things. If you are having heart disease, eat all red vegetables and red fruits. If you want to improve your immunity, use all white vegetables and white fruits. If you want your shining skin, glowing skin, you are uh, fond of such type of the skin, very good, uh, soft and good, then you can use uh, all yellow vegetables. If uh, you want to cleanse your body, toxic you want to release, and you want to get a good, uh, healthy body, healthy style, and the probiotic bacteria and all this, use green. This is the cleansing. If you are having inflammation, use orange, orange type of thing. That the liver disease or something, the inflammation. If you are feeling old and you want antioxidants, if you want to delay aging, use purple type of the vegetables. <laughs> Spinach also you can use. This is one of the wonderful thing which will uh, which contain the beta carotene and antioxidants. You can use kale. You can use tomato fruit juice, tomato juice. Tomato juice is very good. It is uh, rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, iron and folate. You can use watermelons. This is the wonderful uh, summer uh, summer drink. You can say it, and it it, it includes. Several things, vitamins A, vitamin C, magnesium and zinc, very good immuno, immuno booster. Papaya is a, a, another immuno booster and it is having the one enzyme papain. And this papain enzyme is digestive in nature. And it is also a rich source of potassium and magnesium and folate. These are the three very good, uh, very good and very important for the immunity also. Kiwi is another uh, fruit which uh, is a rich source of the vitamin K and vitamin C. And red bell pepper. This red bell pepper is one very important, very wonderful vegetable and it contains three times more vitamin as compared to the oranges. So this red bell pepper, but this red bell pepper, don't cook them. Please try to cook them, uh, them by the uh, steam, under the steam. If you are uh, cooking in the under the steam, then it's steam, then, then it's vitamin C content is preserved and it remains good. You can use broccoli. Broccoli is also very good. And this is also to be cooked uh, steam. Pumpkin seeds. These are the one of the wonderful, wonderful uh, things, this, these seeds. They are good for your bone health, menopause system, urinary health, hair and skin, mental health, prostate health. Very good, rich source of vitamin A, C, B6, magnesium and zinc. You can use sunflower seeds, you can use strawberry, you can use this mix, carrot, apples and orange. You can use strawberry, kiwi seeds, you can use these three mix if you are using this mix. They, they, they give you the more protection. They give you the variety of the things and they give you the uh, good diet. A spinach, this garlic is one of the wonderful cuisine. Every civilization in the world has realized several chemical compound, compounds. They are uh, present and there is a weak evidence that it also help to lower the blood uh, blood pressure and it is a great immuno booster it has great immuno booster pro properties you can use in the morning cut into the three or four pieces and just swallow it with the water ginger is another wonderful wonderful uh, uh, wonderful ingredient i will say it that this is uh, containing the gingerol which is the anti cancerous in nature and it is also very good. It is antiviral also, and it uh, protects against the cough and cold, nausea, and it is a wonderful, uh, wonderful gift of nature, which should be eaten by everybody every day. Turmeric. Oh, my dear. Good. So many disease against so many disease. Just you take one spoon of turmeric in the night, in the milk, or in the warm water, you will get rid of all these diseases.
the wonderful ayurvedic drug you can say it, it is antiviral it is rheumatoid against kaam karti rheumatoid arthritis or several several diseases and it is also uh, against uh, this um, this uh, uh, corona virus not the covid 19 it has not been yet uh, demonstrated but it is against the against the same type of the virus families and this turmeric is wonderful uh, drug you can say the yogurt is one of the very good thing which give you the protection which you which gives you a good uh, source of the almonds they are a good source 15 mg of vitamin each day you need and you can this is the vitamin e rich uh, diet green tea also you can use green tea uh, yeah, i i know that uh, you people where you are living in nagaland it is the uh, wonderful Uh, place of the nature it is the rich source of the uh, anrud gave me some of the uh, very good herbs which i am using since last more than 2 years and uh, and uh, and they are uh, giving a good uh, good cleaning of the nose and it is a wonderful uh, place nagaland uh, i love and i like it uh, the natural beauty and the green green tea of that that place the poultry Uh, chicken you can use vitamin C B6 rich and the selfies also uh, because you people live there so these are the some of the non veg uh, diets which i included just last night in the my presentation that you people will love it they are also very good and they also give you the protection and there are the some mushrooms these mushrooms a large number of the mushroom they are also very good source of the nutrition complete food and they also provide a good uh, good uh, protection and uh, increase your immunity now this is uh, i think my almost the last slide now this is the one of the recent slide which i have collected uh, from a source of the american society and now it is predicted that the drugs for this corona virus are already known or already existing in the present system and these are the various drugs which are having the potential potential i am saying it potential to treat the corona virus although the final treatment is not yet demonstrated but these drugs are having the antiviral properties and they are having a good potential and they should be used now uh, these medicinal plants we can use and i would like to tell you one uh, in a concluding remark what is that that is uh, we people are looking forward about the vaccine uh, which is most likely to come in the next 6 months uh, or, or or so but the question is that this is a millionaire question millionaire dollar question million dollar question that whether this vaccine which will come in the market will be effective this time will tell because this is the rna virus it is flexible it is changing its nature and more most important thing is this that the antibodies which are being formed against this virus they are short lived they are living for a short time in the body therefore the t cells because immunity is not only based on the antibodies it is also based on the t cells white blood cells and white blood cells are very important cells they are the macrophages and they eat the uh, eat the virus and after eating they eliminate from the body so the effectiveness of this uh vaccine it will be mainly depend upon uh the t cells i'm uh, giving I, i have shared this and i have written and some of the scientists they are also agreeing with my viewpoint uh, being a microbiologist but because this is a large virus and uh, it is very difficult for the large virus to interact with the antibodies uh, the antibody size is almost uh, fixed or it is not variable and therefore when the virus is large then it is difficult for the antibody to interact and that's why this uh, we, uh, I, uh, scientifically i think that this t cells 
will play a major role uh, in this and uh, your immunity boosting effect uh, this ayurveda and the yoga will also play a very good role uh, in the control and management of this uh, covid 19 or coronavirus disease so please uh, love nature protect nature and try to maintain a balance between nature health and economy and i love nagaland and i would love to see nagaland and i know that uh, beautiful place uh, wonderful place uh, natural place and you people are protecting the nature uh, preserving the nature conserving the nature i have collected a large list of the uh, plants medicinal plants from nagaland and uh, we are working in shobit institute of engineering and technology we are working over them and we and uh, i am of the opinion that you people are the great lover of the nature thank you very much thank you thanks uh, thank you anrudh thank you anrudh babar and thank you to the college thank you to the uh, people who have been listening to me patiently for uh, i think i have taken a long time so i i should not close thank you very much thank you anrudh thank you sir thank you thank you so much uh, sir please kindly do not say that you have taken a lot of time because uh, it has been a very enlightening session and uh, we are really happy that uh, in your busy schedule you are able to take out some time for us uh, i request uh, uh, you know the, the, the honorable uh, participants uh, in case if you have any question uh, kindly please uh, uh, you may ask sir is ever ready to answer if there is any question uh, all right if there is no question then i ask one question to you sir yes yes yes, could, yes 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 if you could if you could permit my old habit of asking questions sir <laughs> oh man I, i i love to answer the questions because if okay if, if the questions are not intelligent the person will not be intelligent he will Are, he will perfect. not work very hard uh, when when he is put to the difficult questions then only the person uh, he tries to work more and more and more hard to so this right sir sir i think this is a well debated question i'm i want to raise a question about herd immunity see as you have rightly mentioned that there is no uh, you know any a probability model which is in existence to check the probability of the vaccine of the medicine or any other thing so these are hypotheses that we are uh, putting forward for discussion right so these are barely hypotheses so question is that whether those hypotheses will be work or not that time will decide but my question is whether during the course of time will the humanity or the herd immunity yes herd immunity yes it will develop because now the herd immunity that is the community immunity you can say it it develops when more than 70% of the population is exposed i'm not saying infected mind it the try to try to differentiate between the word infection and exposure when more than 70 80% of the population is exposed to an infection to a infectious organism then the this population develop the immunity that is they develop the antibodies they develop the t cells in the in the body and they provide the community immunity and uh, now the uh, the recent survey in delhi which shows that 25% of the population is having the antibodies i am of the opinion as a microbiologist because this is the screening test and they are talking of the antibodies but had they tested the t cells then they might have been known that the much much larger population in delhi or much much larger population in maharashtra or elsewhere in any state is having a good amount of the exposure to this virus infection and they have developed the t cells because in this case the t cells are having the more or are giving the more immunity in comparison to the antibodies and therefore uh, we should try to 
uh, try to uh, screen even for the T, uh, T cells and T cells that is the T killer cells and T helper cells both because T killer cells uh, they kill the uh, virus or they eat the virus and they remove it and the T helper cells what they do they help to develop your system to develop your uh, defense system to fight against this uh, infectious agent so yes uh, i do agree that uh, uh, that the uh, herd immunity until the herd immunity develops they will not be able to protect because in see in case of spain in case of italy in england and the herd immunity has already developed and now you will find that they that the population and the number of the cases they have reduced drastically reduced and in, in us still the time has to come and in india uh, herd in, in in india i am of i am of a very strong opinion that one thing is that the virus strain this virus strain which is which has uh, entered in india it is not so dangerous it is not a, a, it is not uh, so virulent as it was virulent in Italy or as it was virulent in Wuhan. Its virulence has uh, decreased. Its virulence is less and the due to the vegetarian habit and due to the use of the large amount of the spices by uh, Indians, uh, spice, uh, Indian kitchen, Indian kitchen, kitchen is giving the protection some sort of protection to the uh, indian population that is why uh, our population is uh, showing lesser number of the uh, infectious uh, persons in comparison to the other countries uh, yes have i answered your question yes anrod Uh, how can we improve our immunity with ethno-medicinal plants through bioinformatics research? How can we improve our immunity? Oh, with yes, 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 yes. I have given you a long list. I have given you a long list. Uh, 30 slides, 25, 30 slides. They were on the immunoboosters. That is, we can concentrate on vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc rich diet. If okay. we are uh, we are uh, we are uh, focusing on the vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc rich diet, then these will uh, improve our immunity. I have shown you the some uh, the many of the slides uh, of the fruits, vegetables, on all these things. These these all these slides they they have um, one very. Uh, uh, should I show you the again, or if you want, I will share these slides with you people, uh, and you can uh, share with your uh, students. With your colleagues and with the some people who are interested to know that which are the uh, ingredients or which are the uh, some of the things in these common herbs many uh, many uh, many herbs uh, they are uh, they, they are present in uh, nagaland many wonderful herbs i will say medicinal plants last uh, time sir, there is yeah, last time yeah. you gave me the wonderful uh, wonderful uh, <laughs> small bottle <Okay. laughs> thank you sir so there is a third question uh, this question is asked by uh, miss nisha daya she is from tetsu college uh, department of english her question is sir on the basis of what you shared with us can we say that keeping people in quarantine centers is causing more risk of making people get infected than preventing it isn't it dangerous and false oh, and oh, oh my dear you, 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 you have you have raised a uh, who has raised this question this is nisha nisha daya <laughs> thank you very much nisha thank you very much uh, <laughs> because this is one of the very important question very close to my heart because right, right. Uh, we are advocating since day first that we should educate the pupil and we should allow the pupil the home quarantine Quarantine is one of the most important aspect to deal with this coronavirus. In 1918, Spanish flu after the First World War, it spread and then the pupil had heard the name of this lockdown. But at that time, this lockdown was not at the world level. It was not in the world. It was 
only in the few cities or few countries not in the entire world but this time what has happened that this time because the spread of this virus is throughout the world and the entire world is seeing the lockdown lockdown is the only and only solution to stop or to break the chain of this transmission but this home quarantine we have been recommending since last four or five months continuously and the what the biggest mistake the government of india has done i'm saying from your platform for the first time that we created the panic this electronic media created the panic in the people and the pupil they concealed they hide it in the house and they did not reveal the symptoms that has led to the multiplication of the infection had we created the awareness from the very first day in the pupil the media role was very very bad and very dangerous the media should have been very positive they should have educated the people that this is the virus and this virus is spread like this and how you can protect the most dangerous thing is that the media has invited the politicians who do not know abcd about the virus who do not know abcd about the microbiology and they were giving the beautiful one hour two hour lectures uh on that how to control this virus how to control this disease this is the most disgusting in a country uh, like this civilized country it is not uh, it should not be allowed at all i'm I, i'm very furious about it that what the mistake they have done the second mistake they had done that you lost the fir you catch this this this, this you catch him and you show him that if somebody is infected you protect him like a criminal and that is the one of the very very sad thing you should have sympathy anybody could have been infected it is a natural infection you created a panic this is this virus is not a killer virus the only thing is that you should have created a well awareness that this is the virus like the other viruses cold hai cough hai dengue hai spine uh, spine flu hai bahut sare flu hai aate rehte hain ye bhi aaya chala jayega now the now the now the pupil at this time they are not so much panic as they were before four months now the, the uh, now this virus will go and the home quarantine should have been recommended home quarantine should have been allowed and when you do the home quarantine i have we have also prepared a uh, home quarantine protocol and we had a uh, two day uh, international meeting and from the international experts uh, on our uh, facebook uh, of the shobhat university we have uh, projected this uh, entire program and we have recommended that uh, there should be a room separate room which should be attached with the toilet and the person can be asked to remain uh, inside the room and he should keep all his belongings all his necessities in the room he should have a mobile he should have a laptop he should have a internet connection and he should be able to allow to talk to his friends to his family members and to the doctor and he should confine himself within the room he should listen music he should do creative activities he should watch television he should uh, uh, read write do some constructive thing divert his mind and Uh, and uh, and should uh, protect himself and then beside that when we are not having any medicine against it we are not having any vaccine against it what is wrong in the ayurvedic system what is wrong in the herbal herbal drugs to use they are not having any side effect you are not allowing the people to eat it what is wrong what is wrong with the mentality this uh, this ayurvedic system for example tulsa diloe ashwagandha mulati uh, lemon lemon grass uh, black pepper clove uh, mint these are known for antiviral properties since millions of years our forefathers were using it 
turmeric they, they have been using and without any side effects i know some of my friends in germany and uh, usa and england who were positive who were found positive and they did not uh, uh, seek the uh, admission in the hospital they confined themselves uh, in their homes uh, home quarantine home isolation and they uh, they uh, they took this kadha but i am uh, telling you uh, and they are now perfect perfectly all right so when we are not having any uh, any remedy for this then what was the wrong why you were criticizing why you, why you were i am not uh, i am not quoting i am not uh, propagating why you were uh, stopping uh, one person a noble person uh, from hardwar hardwar who uh, propagated or who brought some of the things that everybody was against him everybody from the international community everybody this media channel they were this was the pharmacy lobby which were which were working against him but what is he saying this is the immunity booster and the immunity booster they are already known giloy is known well known you can you can see any of the book of the ayurveda since time immemorial it is the antiviral tulsa is antiviral what was wrong they should have been allowed they should be the, the people should uh, i am using it my entire family is using it. my 3 year old uh, granddaughter she uh, she enjoys this uh, uh, kala tea in the evening uh, so can you take more question the last one hello yes. any other question so this home quarantine should be uh, allowed and should be uh, propagated we have drawn a uh, protocol also it is available on, on our shobit uh, university website yes any other any other question hello yes. there is one more question there is one more question and that would be the last question yes. I, I, no i will love to <laughs> or and those questions who are left you could send me on my mail i will answer okay i'll do that it is about exercise because we have spoken about uh, spoken about things at the first exercise can you tell us in under the why why your voice is breaking can you hear me hello you can uh, right i think there is uh, there should be a box in the uh, for the chat uh, uh, sir it is there it is there ah uh, yes Okay. I just uh, now I saw the comment from Nisha also. Yeah, sir, there is one question about exercise. This exercise, is, yes, yoga, yeah. yoga, yes, yes. Yoga is very good for the health, very good for the immunity booster. Now, nowadays, I say that most of the time you uh, you see one ad that kya uh, chal raha hai. So most of the time you get this fog. No, nowadays yoga. yog meditation and ayurved what is going yog meditation and ayurved yog and meditation these two things are very important and they good they give you the immunity boosting effect they give you a good health they give you the mental peace they give you the uh, give you the psychological treatment they give you the uh, hormonal balance and Uh, they are the true immunity booster they conserve your energy meditation meditate and next time uh, if you like then we can have a session on importance of yoga and meditation and this meditation you know that this meditation is one of the thing uh, that you can conserve energy positive energy thank you sir and when you conserve the positive energy then your aging is delayed our 
uh, Rishi, Rishi Muni were living for 300, 400 years uh, during the old days. This is true. Science prove it. Because if you conserve the energy even today, if you store the energy even today, then uh, th then you can live for the uh, for many years. So the uh, so the aging can be delayed by conserving the energy. And the conservation. Sir, sir, sir. Thank you. And the <laughs> yoga yoga will give you a good health. Uh, will give you good uh, mental health. I will say it. Sir, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, today has you. been ha has been a very fruitful session, very long session. But what I believe was the content was very important. And Thank I'm you. really happy and much, much gratitude to to, to Professor Gurk. Uh, he is my godfather and I personally <laughs> know him. And thank you so much, sir. Uh, we will come back to you again with another I subject. I tell you, he, 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 he has, uh, he, uh, Anrudh has given a wonderful two volumes thesis to JNU in law, which will be remembered for years to come in the JNU. And that was the original piece. I have read his thesis and it is uh, related to the uh, Nagaland. The uh, heads up to you that you have studied the Nagaland uh, very minutely, deeply and correctly. You have uh, emphasized and uh, you have nicely predicted. Uh, uh, Krishnan has also uh, drawn some of the beautiful drawings uh, about the Naga people. Heads to the uh, to, to your people. The, uh, the, he has spoken so high about you people that uh, I, I still, uh, whenever I get time, I study because he has given the uh, one set of his thesis to me also uh, as a gift. He's a he's a wonderful researcher, and I will love to have him in my university. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. You come here, sir. You come here. <laughs> sir, I'm not going to go anywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your Thank time, you, Thank for you. your energy, and for your knowledge. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thanks to the participant and thanks to the Thank those who asked me the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, dear. Bye.